All right, if you see a ladder, would you walk under it or around it? What about a black cat? Are you changing your path if there's one in front of you? Well, our next guest is looking at whether or not luck actually exists, or if we're just using the concept to explain common sense. A big question to tackle on a Tuesday morning, but we are going for it, and we're doing it with the help of Knock on Wood, written by university professor and statistician Jeffrey Rosenthal. Jeffrey, thank you for being here. Thank you. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. Okay, so you were born on Friday the 13th. I was. Uh, and thanks to your book, I learned that there is a technical name <laughs> for a fear of Friday the 13th. It's a doozy. It's Frigatriscadecaphobia. Something like that, yeah. Okay, why, why is Friday the 13th considered unlucky? Well, it's funny. I mean, like a lot of superstitions that sort of developed over time, some people say it was partially because there were uh, 13 people at the uh, Last Supper when, when uh, Jesus was betrayed, and then when Jesus died, that was on a Friday. Other people say, well, back in uh, 1307, I think it was, a French king ordered some of the uh, Knights of Templar to be rounded up, and some of them were tortured and killed, and that was on Friday, October 13th. So uh, people sort of develop it, and then people get this idea, Friday the 13th is unlucky. Uh, you break luck into different categories, and you've actually rewritten the serenity prayer to help with this. Grant me the serenity to accept the luck, accept the random luck I cannot control, the knowledge to change the luck which can be modified, and the wisdom to know the difference. Exactly. What do you mean <laughs> by luck can be modified? Yeah, well, I mean, it depends what you mean by luck a little bit, but like for that, let's say you're um, applying for a job. Well, you can do some things, right? You can be well prepared, you can have a good resume, you can uh, practice your skills at interviewing. But some of it's going to be luck depending on what other people apply for the job and what the company is looking for. So you have to say, well, I can control part of it because I can be well prepared, but part of it's outside of my control. And even if, you know, even if you have a uh, lucky charm with you or even if it's Friday the 13th or whatever, that's not going to affect those other things. Jeffrey, what is a luck trap? So when I say luck trap, I mean that people sometimes get sort of tricked or trapped into thinking that there are patterns which aren't really there. So one is if something just happens one time and you think, aha, that really proves it. Well, we know as statisticians, you actually need a bunch of evidence to prove something. <laughs> but also, people will, for example, sometimes, well, they'll notice some amazing thing that happens once, but they won't say, what are all the other times it could have happened yeah. and it didn't? Like, <laughs> like maybe two people meet in a totally amazing, obscure place. But what about all the other times you were traveling and, and, you, and you ran into people, but they weren't people who were your long-lost friends? So. Uh, you um, go through and debunk a lot of lucky sayings. So I want to go through some of them with you, and I okay. want you to explain them away to me. Okay. The luck of the Irish. Now, I'm Irish. I wonder, <laughs> does this actually exist? Is it a thing? Yeah, well, I was going to say, you know, there's certainly some Irish people are very lucky, like a big TV star like you <laughs> of Irish background, but uh, there doesn't seem to be, you know, any real evidence that Irish people are more lucky. And, you know, how could there be? And, of course, the history of Ireland is not entirely well, a lucky one. There. Yes, yeah, yes, that, that you know, pesky famine, potato famine. Yeah, yeah, and all these problems. <laughs> so, you know, but I mean, I mean, uh, some people say that Irish on, in general have an attitude of focusing on the positive a little more, and that's one way you can feel lucky. So maybe that's part of the reason there's this saying that people maybe feel like the Irish are lucky, but they're not really more lucky. Do bad things really come in threes? So it's an interesting thing. That's an example of what I'd call a biased observation, because if one bad thing happens to you, you don't think, OK, well, how many were there? There was one. Or even if two things happen, you kind of deal with them. But then if three bad things happen, you say, wow, look at that. Three bad things happen. It must be that bad things come in threes. So, uh, so that's another luck trap. People say, well, you know, I notice it when three bad things happen. But all the other times, one or two bad things happen, I just don't think about it. So there's no real reason that it has to come in threes. Do good things, in fact, come to people who wait? Well, that one I sort of agree with, if you think about it, in the sense of, you know, if there's lots of randomness out there, sometimes the randomness is going to be bad, and sometimes it's going to be good. So just because things have gone bad for you for a while, well, they might go good for you later, and the longer you wait, the more chance you'll have some good along with the bad. So patience pays off. Patience pays off. Uh, uh, let's talk about something a little different. Why is, um, why is sport a place where people fixate on superstition uh -huh. and luck? Well, I guess any time you have you know, a competition and a lot of pressure and you, know, you really hope you win, you really hope it goes well, people don't want to just say, well, you know, it's random whether or not I'll throw a touchdown or an interception. They want to say, look, I've got my lucky charm or it's my lucky day or there's some lucky reason, so I feel the confidence. And, of course, interestingly, having that confidence, even if it comes from a lucky charm that you know, I don't think there's any evidence for, but if it gives you that confidence, there is evidence that if you just tell people, hey, this drink's going to make you stronger, then they run faster. So <laughs> you can believe it and it can have a big effect. But as far as the lucky charm really having an effect, there's just no evidence for that. You are a scientist. You are a statistician. You are a man of numbers. You are a, a, a rational human being. You wrote a book of debunking lucky uh, myths. 
But if you walk down the street and you look down at your feet and you see a four-leaf clover, are you picking it up? Uh, well, I mean, I wouldn't believe in the magic powers, but I might still think it's cool because they're very rare. It's like one clover in 10,000 or something. So, sure, I'd pick it up to show everybody. Lastly, what, what is your conclusion? What's your final conclusion of this book? Well, I mean, if there's a point I'm trying to make is that, first of all, a lot of things people believe really aren't quite true, but we can try to understand what is and isn't true. And I try to lay out some ways to think about it so that you won't get tricked into believing patterns that aren't there, but you will understand the things which maybe they're luck, but maybe they do have some logic, too. Jeffrey Rosenthal, thank you so much. I've had a lot of fun learning with you today. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It's Appreciate a pleasure. It.